What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. And in this video, we're going to be doing a revised character breakdown for Jason, the OG Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. Similar to my other character breakdowns, we're going to be running through the move list, doing some combos, and then I'm going to talk about a game plan for Jason. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys like what you see in this video, consider checking out my social media links. You can follow me on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash ParkerLad88. You can follow me on Twitter, or X now, I guess, uh, at ParkerLad2, that part is still the same. Join the Woosh Clan if you have Discord. With your entry into the Woosh Clan, the Woosh Clan will grow ever stronger. And if you want to do just a little bit more to support me, consider checking out my Cash App. All the links will be in the description. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and move into this character breakdown. And of course, we will start by talking about mobility. When it comes to mobility, I would say that Jason is pretty average. I think this actually makes a lot of sense that J because I would consider Jason kind of like a framework or blueprint for how a lot of the mecha mechanics in this game works. And I think that this definitely applies to his mobility because he's one of the first characters in the game. You know, he, he has this inherent run built into his forward walking animation, you know, just to kind of introduce those who aren't very proficient with mobility to give them some mobility options. So he definitely has that. His backwards walking animation, he's not too slow, he's not too fast, it's just, it's pretty average. And I think this also extends to his jumps, his dash jumps, and his regular dashes. As you can see, he doesn't go too far, the startup doesn't take too long, in about two dashes, I'm already next to my opponent and I can actually start pressing buttons, uh, and the like. Um, one thing I will say that I will give Jason, is Jason is actually pretty fast. Um, the amount of speed that he has, how quick he can traverse the screen, actually surprises me for a character who's kind of as average Ryu-esque as, as he is. So I will say that, that is one thing that he definitely has in his favor. Um, he can also wave dash as well as you can see, but I definitely think the attack dash is his preferred uh, method of movement. Jumps, once again, pretty average. As you can see, the character he's not too floaty, um, his jumps are too shallow, which extends to his jazz jump uh, as well. I can do one dash jump from full screen to, you know, get in on my opponent, but it's not as floaty as some of the other characters might be who are more rush down uh, centric uh, than Jason is. So mobility options across the board, pretty average for Jason. Moving into normal based attacks, we have standing light, crouching light. You can rapid fire this a couple of times, great for hit confirms. Standing medium, crouching medium, which is this sweep. You have standing heavy. And you have Crouching Heavy, which is a launcher. You can see here from a standing position, it actually doesn't put the opponent in a launcher state. They have to be airborne in order for you to get that. Moving into aerial normals, we have air light. We have air medium. This actually is Jason's cross-up. It's a little situational, but he does have it. And we have air heavy. Now, when it comes to normals you're going to be using the most with Jason, they're going to be two you're going to be using a lot. It's going to be your Crouching Light and your Air Heavy. Let's talk about the Air Heavy first. It's pretty simple to explain. It's a good jump in. It's got a decent amount of range. It's going to be the button you're going to be using the most to approach with Jason. Easy for hit confirms. Let's go ahead and talk about the Crouching Light. Crouching Light is far and away Jason's best button on the ground, at least in my opinion. I'm never claiming to be an expert. But you see this rapid fire ability here makes it easy for combos it makes it easy for hit confirms if your opponent tries to push block you it still puts you in a safe position as well so a lot of jason's game plan on the ground is going to involve fishing with that crouching light so make sure that you guys get used to using that i would say standing heavy i would but in terms of like block strings things like that you kind of have to double commit to like a button afterwards in just kind of throwing this out randomly i just don't think is like the best um so once again in review Best buttons for Jason, gonna be that Crouching Light and that Air Heavy. Those are gonna be the ones you're gonna be using the most. All right, let's move into throw. As you can see, Jason's forward throw will put the opponent into a wall-bound state, which you can then follow up with for combos afterwards with the proper timing. Back throw, same dealy. Jason's back throw will put the opponent into a launcher state which is actually going to be very important in your combo structure. It will eat up one of your launchers, unfortunately, but we'll talk a little bit more about that once we start getting the combos. Let's move into EX. So as you can see, if you do Jason's EX, it'll put the opponent into a stagger state that you can follow up for combos afterwards. But if you press the EX button again, 
Jason will actually do a follow-up, as you can see there, for a little bit of extra damage. You won't get the combo, of course, but once again, extra damage, which of course you can then combo into super. Now, as you can see, Jason's super will cause a wall bounce as well, which you can get a combo follow-up afterwards. But once again, we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into combos. Let's move into Jason's special moves. And of course, we're going to start with his neutral special, which is his counter. Now, when you press neutral special, this will put Jason into a counter state. But regardless of whether he counters or not, he will follow up with the strike afterwards, which will put the opponent into a crumple state. But of course, with the proper timing, you will get the counter state and you'll get that crumple state afterwards as well. Now, Jason's counter is a whole lot better than it used to be, but unfortunately, Jason still suffers from the fact that if you do it with the improper timing, so if you do it too late, Jason will actually get stuffed out of his counter, as you can see right there. So that is unfortunate, but it still is good. If you have the right read, then it sets up for great combo opportunities. So that is going to be Jason's neutral special. Let's move into Jason's next special move, and that is going to be his forward special. So as you can see, if you press forward and special at the same time, Jason will lunge toward his opponent doing a sword strike, which he can do up to three times. This is commonly referred to as Jason's sword rekkas. A little bit of fighting game history for those of you who don't know, but rekkas are traditionally moves that you can do um, consecutively behind each other in some kind of quick session. Uh, this term originates from a character named Fei Long from Street Fighter, um, his move was called the Rekka Sengeki. He was the first character that could actually consecutively do special moves behind each other, and so that's where the term stems from. So any character that has a move like this, they are commonly referred to as Rekkas. So let's go ahead and get back to Jason and the properties of this move. So as mentioned before, you can do this up to three times before he has to reset and do it again. You can stagger these. You can also mix it up. Just as a couple of examples. A couple of neat properties about um, Jason's Sword Rekkas, the first one of which is that it actually is one of his OTGs. You can see you can get a little extra damage there. It also allows Jason to set up for some neat uh, sandwich opportunities with his teammates, just as an example. That's probably an example for you of something that you can do with Jason. So you can see get set up for some really tricky cross-up uh, opportunities in combination with your teammates. It's actually not a bad option off a of push block either. If I can get Tommy to help me out here. As you can see right there. Not a bad option to throw out every once in a while. You can get a quick punish on your opponent for some extra damage. So those are just a couple of properties of the sword wreckers. They are actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and move into Jason's next special move and that is going to be his back special. So you can see here that when you press back special, Jason will do this retreating roll. In addition to being a good option to put space between you and your opponent, he does have a couple of options he can actually do out of this, whether you press the light, medium, or heavy attack options. Let's go ahead and talk about what those options are. So light and medium will give you gunshots. Depending on which button you press, that will dictate which one he will start with, and you can do up to two of these. So if you start with the light attack option, he'll start high and then he'll go low. And if you start with the medium attack option, He'll start low and he'll go high. And once again, you get two. These are going to be this is going to be the primary way that Jason controls space with his projectiles. Fortunately, they are pretty durable. You can see they can actually eat up Tommy's energy ball, and his energy ball is actually a pretty durable projectile. So you have a decent projectile that you're working with here. So once again, those are gonna be your main things. It's not the best because it didn't have like the greatest of startup, but it is an option that Jason has. Let's go ahead and move on to his next option, and that is going to be his heavy attack option. You will see that he'll go into his sword records. Uh, you can do two of these. The second fault you will do by pressing the special button, so do keep that in mind. This isn't an option that you really utilize a whole lot with Jason because he doesn't really get like a whole lot from it, so it's not particularly practical, but the option is there. Um, if you don't want to just if you don't want to you know fiddle around with whether you want to start high with your projectiles or low with your projectiles because generally when you're playing Jason you don't run into that too much 
you can just hit back special and then mash on that special button to make sure that those gunshots come out. Because the main thing is you kind of just want these to take up space so that you can actually help that get started with uh, Jason's ground game, mostly that, that light. So that is going to be Jason's back roll. Uh, one additional property that I do want to mention about it is that it actually is projectile invincible. It's kind of difficult to demonstrate, but I'm going to attempt to. I'm going to see if I can demonstrate this. Uh, let me try one more time. That's the part that I want to do. So, all right, here we go. Not bad. Hold on. Second. There you go. So you have some projectile invincibility demonstrated there. This sounds nice on paper, but the unfortunate part about a lot of projectiles in this game is that they travel towards you. So when Jason is retreating in the same way the projectiles go, that projectile invincibility doesn't really do a whole lot because once you recover, you'll just hit the projectile. But anyway, main thing for the roll is that is how you get your projectiles. It's a safe option that you can use like um, whenever you're pressuring your opponent, like with buttons and stuff like that. You can go into the back roll to put space between your opponent, get those projectiles on the screen, and then move back in under the projectiles. Kind of like that. Let's move into Jason's final special move, and that is going to be his air special. And his air special is just going to be his air gunshot. This is going to be the primary way that Jason is going to be controlling space, in addition to his crouching light, and his his regular gunshots. You're going to be using these to litter the screen with projectiles just to kind of frustrate your opponent. You can play a pretty patient game this way. The neat thing about Jason's projectiles, in addition to the fact that you can fire this so low to the ground, is that if you're actually paying attention, in combination with Jason's speed, you actually can get a combo off of this. You can see that the gunshot has a lot of hits done on it, perfect for combo opportunities. So if you have a good eye, you can actually catch a lot of people with that and go into full combo from there. So do keep that in mind. And that'll do it for all of Jason's special moves. Let's go ahead and move into assists, and of course for Jason, his assist is going to be his sword wreckers. You can see that his sword wreckers will hit twice. Um, this does maintain its OTG properties, as you can see right there. But the main thing that actually makes Jason's sword wreck as good is that because he crosses to the other side on hit or on block, it sets up for sandwich opportunities. So it's a really easy way for Jason to get a cross up on the opponent because you don't have to worry about that recovery. So it creates a really nasty left right mix up situation, which is really hard to block and almost leads to full and pretty much leads to full combo uh, with Jason. So Jason's assist is actually pretty good and does have a lot of utility to it. Now that we're done going over all that stuff, let's go ahead and start moving into combos. And of course, we'll start with auto combo number one with lights. Auto combo number two with mediums. And auto combo number three with heavies. Now, per tradition, I'll be doing the fully completed combo first with number notation. For those of you who are more experienced at the game and you just want to see what the inputs are and what the combos look like, but for those of you who prefer my normal combo structure of how I break down combos step by step, that'll be there for you as well. So let's go ahead and get started with our first intermediate combo. So let's go ahead and get started by breaking down this first intermediate level S combo. It's not a particularly difficult combo as you guys can see, but let's go ahead and break it down. We'll start with our air heavy. We'll then transition into a standing medium, into heavy auto combo. From here, we will then do standing heavy into crouching heavy for launcher. So get that right there. Once the opponent is airborne, we'll follow it with an air medium into air special. In a staggered fashion, once again. Once we land back on the ground, we'll then do another heavy auto combo into standing heavy, into crouching heavy for a second launcher. So that'll kind of look like this. Then we'll follow it with another air medium into air special. Once we land back on the ground, we'll follow it with a standing heavy into EX. But we will let both hits of EX first, so we'll press EX twice. So we get the follow-up. This is probably where the first 
difficult com part of this combo relative to the combo you know itself comes in because as soon as jason touches his feet to the floor it's really quick we will want to hit that super and if we do it too late then that super will not connect so that's the first part that you want to practice just making sure that you're getting used to doing the both parts of the ex and as soon as jason touches the floor you want to hit that super now after we do super the next part that you'll want to practice is making sure you have the timing to do that for special afterwards. You can set this up from any hard knockdown. Super is the easiest way to do it, but as soon as Jason recovers, forward special. You do that three times. Now, against airborne opponents, which the opponent will be airborne, you'll want to stagger this. Probably like that, once again. You'll want to stagger it just like that for that extra damage. So taking it from Super... You'll want to do that in order so you can get that extra damage. And those are all the pieces of this combo. Once again, not particularly difficult to uh, execute. Uh, main things you want to practice are just, you know, doing super after the EX as soon as Jason touches the floor. And then after Jason recovers from super, making sure you can get those staggered sword rekkas in that rhythm. And if you're able to do the entire combo, you should have something that looks a little like this. And that'll do it for this intermediate combo. Let's go ahead and move on to our more advanced combos. Now, when it comes to comboing a Jason, there are a couple things that we need to know how to combo from. We need to know how to combo from forward throw. We need to be able to combo from back throw. We need to combo from the counter state. And we need to be able to combo from EX. Now, for... Um, the, uh, the throws, I will talk about some variations to combo structure once we get there, but those will be the main things. Let's go ahead and start with Jason's first bread and butter combo. All right, let's start breaking down this bread and butter combo for Jason. So very much like our intermediate combo, it'll start very similar. You'll do that air heavy into standing medium, into heavy auto combo, into standing heavy, into crouching heavy for that launcher. That entire sequence is going to be the same. Just a little note about the next part that we're going into. There is going to be a just the smidgenest of delay that I do between the launcher and actually jumping for the staggered air light medium before I actually do it. I found that half the time if I jump immediately and try to do the air light medium, um, Jason will fall below the opponent and I won't be able to hit them with that medium as I am coming down. So just delay it just ever so slightly and that should help. So as you saw after the launcher, we'll do an air light medium in a staggered fashion, just like that. Air light on the way up, air medium on the, on the way down with that timing. Just a slight, just a slight stagger. And then we'll do a re-jump into air light medium special, but you will delay that special uh, a little bit. And it's really important for positioning for the next part of the combo where we actually get that dash. So just a demonstration. Oh, see, that's what I was talking about right there. That's where you want Jason to be. You see how much below uh, Tommy I was when I did that? This is important. You need Jason to be below the opponent because he needs the recovery time in order to get the dash afterwards for that crouching medium. That dash is really important for that corner carry. So once you guys have gotten used to that timing, the next thing you'll want to practice is, once Jason hits the ground is dash into crouching medium. That's what you want to practice. Now, you may get a situation like that where Jason crosses under to the other side, which will carry you back the other way. Um, it doesn't change uh, how the combo works, um, but for the most part, you should be able to stay in front of your opponent. But once again, 
Uh, so that's the part that, parts that you'll want to practice. It's probably the most difficult part in the combo, uh, barring uh, when we actually get to the loops and, and stuff like that. So after you hit with that crouching medium after the dash, you will then go into standing heavy auto combo once again. This will use up our ground bounce, and then we'll go into a standing heavy into crouching heavy for our launcher once again. Then it's the same sequence. And by this point, we'll actually be in the corner, but let's practice this first part just as a generalized refresher so you guys kind of have an idea of what you're looking for. So this is kind of where we are right now. Once again, ignore the side switch. Now, the setup that we're going to do after this once we are here, after that second gunshot, we will then do a standing medium into a staggered crouching medium for that sweep. And this will be the setup for the loops that we are about to do. The loops will proceed as follows. So after you do that crouching medium, you'll have time to recover and go for a crouching light, standing medium, crouching medium. You will then do another crouching light, standing medium, crouching medium. After that, you will then do your final rep of your crouching light and standing medium, but from there, you'll go into standing heavy, EX. At this point, you will have maxed out the juggle limit meter. So let's go ahead and set up what that looks like. And is that's and that's what you'll want. And that's what it'll look like. Those are the only really difficult parts of this combo. The rest of the combo, you'll have this. You'll do your first three hits of light auto combo. One, two, three. Simple. One, two, three. You'll combo that into standing medium, into heavy auto combo. This will cause him to spin out. You'll wait for Jason to recover, and then you'll do your sword wreckers in a staggered fashion, because once again, the opponent will be airborne, so we'll have to stagger those sword wreckers so they will all hit. One, two, three, with that timing. One, two, three. So coming from uh, Jason's heavy auto combo, just like that. And after that, you will cancel into super. Now there's a very important part about canceling into super that I wanna talk about here. And that is the timing in which you cancel into super. If the opponent is too high and you cancel immediately after you do that sword wrecker, like that, the opponent will be too high and they'll just fly over the super. So you'll want to delay it just a little bit. You'll wanna delay it just a little bit. Once again, the opponent won't be airborne in this demonstration here, but that's kind of the time that you'll want. Just a slight delay. This will be something that you'll have to eyeball because sometimes the opponent might be a little bit higher, sometimes they might be a little bit lower. Just eyeball it, and once they are probably about where Tommy's head is, that's when you'll want to initiate the super. And then from there, we'll fall with our sword records. Just like in the intermediate combo. Oh, I can't seem to get it. Hold on. Just like that. So once again, things to practice for this combo. Little helpful tidbit that I mentioned, just delay your jump slightly before you do your air light mediums. Just a little bit. You'll want to make sure that Jason is below the opponent before you throw out that gunshot so you can get the dash into the medium. Right? So that's going to be the first thing we're going to practice. And then, once we actually get to the corner, you'll want to practice those loops with your crouching light into your standing medium, into your crouching medium. You can set this up in the corner just by doing crouching medium launcher. And that's pretty much what you'll want to get. And then, of course, after super, we have, you know, your sword rekkas. And those are probably the biggest parts of this combo that you want to practice. Now, if you do all that, you should be able to get something that kind of looks like this.
and that's what you guys should get. Let's go ahead and move on to our next combo. So the next combo that I'm going to talk about is comboing from the counter state. It's easy to talk about because it's literally the exact same combo. Just replace the counter state hit with the jump in that you would do with your air heavy and the rest of the combo is literally the same. The only difference, and I think this applies with counter with just a lot of counter states, that it does increase your juggle limit a little bit more. So as opposed to being able to do three reps of the crouching light standing medium, crouching medium series, you will do that one time before you proceed to go into crouching light standing medium, standing heavy, into EX, yada yada yada, right? So those are probably the only two notes that I'll make about that. Otherwise the combo is the exact same. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this combo. All right, let's go ahead and talk about comboing from EX now. So, did that combo look familiar? Well, it should, because it was literally the exact same combo that we just did. Now we're just replacing the counter state with the EX. And the good news is that it hits a lot of similar beats to the counter state combo, where we're only doing one series of the crouching light standing medium crouching medium series before we go into our crouching light standing medium standing heavy for the rest of the combo. The only other note that you saw is because we're already using up our stagger state in the beginning, the next time that we do EX, we will just complete it, because otherwise if we just do the one, it'll cause that hard knock down as you saw and how you end this combo is going to vary by how much meter that you have as you can see i demonstrated this while having maxed out meter so if you do have maxed out meter and you do hit somebody with this ex then you should be able to do this combo because you'll just build that bar back but um jason off of the ex doesn't quite build back the two bars that he needs so you really just have to meter manage and kind of figure out where you're at and adjust accordingly but those are going to be the only two differences uh, between uh, the combos. So just like the counter state, you'll do one rep of the crouching light, standing medium, crouching medium. And then once you go for your EX again, you'll finish out the EX before going into super just look in our uh, intermediate combo. So now that we've done talking about that, let's go ahead and move into Jason's next combo. So the next series of combos I'll be talking to you guys about is how to combo from forward throw. There are two variations that I'll be showing you, one where you do forward throw in the corner and one where you do forward throw outside the corner. So let's go ahead and start talking about those. So let's go ahead and start talking about this variation of the forward throw. So when you are outside of the corner and you do forward throw, the hardest part of this combo is literally forward dash, crouching heavy for the launcher, which if I didn't mention before, crouching heavy is Jason's other OTG. This is the hardest part of this combo. But if you can do this part, the rest of the combo is literally the exact same as the bread and butter combo that we just practiced. The only difference being that after you do the super, because we already used up our wall bounce with the throw, you don't have to worry about the wall bounce from the super, and but you'll still just OTG uh, off of forward special like you normally do. But the hardest part is literally doing that. Because even as you saw right there, getting that crouching heavy, if you are not at the right distance and attempting to jump and do the air light afterwards, you'll completely whiff it. So you need to make sure you're traveling the full distance after the dash that you're close enough to get that pickup with the crouching heavy. 
See, that time I was too far. I attempted to actually go for the air light afterwards, it would have missed. Here's the other issue. If you wait too late, you won't be able to get that pickup. You're the right distance, but you waited too late, so you don't get the pickup at all. That's what you want. It's kind of hard to tell, but you actually saw that I was much closer to um, Tommy afterwards, and that's about what you want. The best advice that I can give you is when you see the opponent fling off the wall, that's when you're going to want to see or attempt to do that dash. So they hit the wall. That's when you initiate the dash in order to go for the launcher, and the rest of the combo proceeds as it normally would. So if you're able to practice that, you should be able to get this combo. All right, let's talk about the second variation of the forward throw combo. So as you guys can see, this hits a lot of familiar beasts to the last combo we just did. You could argue it's a little bit easier because as opposed to having to get the dash, all you have to do is just turn right around and do the crouching medium. Or crouching heavy, that's what I'm going to say. And then the rest of the combo is just like the last one. So if you can do that one, and the bread and butter one, and all the other combos that you've seen us do up to this point, then you should be able to do this combo as well. With that being said, let's move on to our final series of combos, and that is going to be how to combo off of back throw. Now, there are going to be three variations that I'm going to show you for comboing off of back throw, because depending on where you are on the screen, that is going to dictate how this combo will end. The good news for this combo is by the time you get to a certain part of it, you will know which variation you are going to do. So, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's break down this version of the uh, back throw combo. This is the version that you will do when you're all the way in the corner. This is the version that I can get the most amount of damage off of. One important note, back throw will eat up one of your launchers. That's why I went for only one rep of the relaunch combo. That's why I only went for one of those, because it eats up the launcher. So we have to find a different way to get damage. And the way that I choose to do it is after I do the back throw, I will go into standing medium, crouching medium, heavy auto combo, followed by standing medium, crouching medium, standing heavy into launcher. So... And then the combo just proceeds as it normally does, where you're doing your loose. Now, once again, because we're doing one less launcher and our juggle limit meter isn't maxed out, we try to sneak in other hits where we can. So in that final rep, where normally we'd be doing a crouching light standing medium standing heavy, instead we'll do a crouching light standing medium crouching medium into standing heavy before going for the EX. And then of course, we will do the first three hits of light auto combo into standing medium, standing heavy into our staggered sword Rekkas before going into super. And this is the next thing that I actually want to talk to you guys about, and I was hoping this situation would come up. Doing super in the corner. You can still get the sword rekkas. It's a little bit more difficult, but you can still get the sword rekkas if the super retains its wall bounds and you're in the corner flipping the back over to the other side. One thing that you have to kind of deal with with Power Rangers is that characters, it takes them 
at least the way it looks, is that it takes them extra frames to turn around, right? before you can do other things. So the OTG timing with your sword rekkas is going to be different than if you were outside the corner. But the extra height, I believe, that you get while the opponent is airborne, when you do super, it'll still give you the time you need in order to recover and do those sword rekkas. So that is something that you'll wanna practice. You can practice that by just doing, um, let's see here. We can just do maybe standing heavy into the sword rekkas, into the staggered sword rekkas out of the corner. They're higher, and that should be the setup that you need in order to practice those out of the corner sword rekkas. So um, that would be the last thing. So once again, if you're able to do the entire combo, you should have something that kind of looks like this. And that's what you guys should get. Let's go ahead and move into our next variation of the back throw combo. So let's go ahead and talk about this variation of the back throw combo. I'm going to call this maybe like a two thirds the screen uh, back throw variation relative to where your opponent is. So between my side, that corner, and your opponent's side, their corner, the opponent is about two thirds the screen away from my side, right? So they still have about this much screen to work with. And this is the variation that we will do. We can't get all the extra hits that we would as in the corner just because we're, we're not in the corner. So, you know, we have to adjust. So what we'll do after the back throw is we will go for a standing medium heavy auto combo. From here, we will dash up for the extra screen space, of course, and we'll do crouching light standing medium into launcher. Now, this version of the combo is unfortunate for a lot of reasons. Number one, we have even less hits than the other corner combo. Number two, it's eating up our launcher. And number three is that we have to use that crouching light. So it's eating up one of our loops that we could do. So we can only do two loops with the crouching light before we have to do the rest of the combo. But the one part that you'll want to practice is just after that heavy auto combo is dashing up and doing that crouching light. That's the main part that you're going to want to practice for this. Keeping in mind all those assorted states that we mentioned after we do the uh, the re-jump combo. You know, we're setting up this combo again. We'll do standing medium, crouching medium, into crouching light, standing medium, crouching medium. So now we're on our second one. So once we do our third one, this third one, we will do crouching light, standing medium, crouching medium, standing heavy, EX and we'll have enough time to do our three hits of light auto combo. One, two, three. Standing medium, heavy auto combo. But once again, our juggle limit meter is even less maxed out than it was before when we did the corner variation. So we have enough time to do a standing heavy before we do our staggered sword Rekka series, right? Then we go ahead and move into super and then the staggered sword and Rekka is after that. And that is how this combo finishes out. So once again, the part that you'll wanna practice the most for this combo, outside of just keeping in mind like what states you've used, yada yada yada, is just doing the standing heavy dash up crouching light. That's the main part that you're going to want to practice. So if you've done everything correctly, you should have something that kind of looks like this. And that's what you guys should get. Let's go ahead and move on to our final variation of the back throw combo. Tyrannosaurus. 
So in this variation of the back throw combo, this is kind of like a full screen situation. I don't know why you'd be in this situation, but hey, you never know. And just like the last back throw combo that we just did, it's going to be very similar. The only difficult part you'll want to practice is after that heavy auto combo, getting that crouching light. Crouching light, staying medium into launcher, and this is just, once again, the unfortunate part about this combo. And this is the only hard part you have to practice. The rest of it is you'll just do the, the launcher. You know, just like that. We can't do another series because it already ate up our launcher. After that, we'll do standing medium, standing heavy, into DX. First three hits of our light auto combo. One, two, three. Standing medium, heavy auto combo. One standing heavy, staggered, sword, rekkas, into super. So that is pretty much how that combo works. And that'll do it for all the combos I'll be demonstrating for you guys in today's video. Now that we're done talking about combos, let's go ahead and move into Jason's game plan. If you haven't figured it out by now, Jason is a great introductory character into Power Rangers. Due to the simplistic nature of his tool set, it really allows you to focus on how the game works, it really allows you to focus on utilizing and mastering the core mechanics of this game. Jason has a tool for every situation. He's got good speed, he's got decent projectiles, he has a move that lets you take advantage of the crossover mechanics in this game. That being said though, some of Jason's tools may be better than others and some of his tools may not be as good as others. So he very much fits that whole jack of all trades, master of none kind of uh, mentality. In terms of Jason's core game plan in and of himself, like how he conducts himself in the neutral, it's going to be all about your gunshots, taking advantage of your speed falling behind them, and utilizing that crouching light in order to get your ground game started and approaching with that air heavy. That's a lot of what Jason does in the ground game. In this vein, because Jason is kind of basic and because he has these assorted tools, you can really use Jason in whatever position you would like to. Naturally, they're gonna be characters that fit roles better than he does, but he can play them all. If you want to take advantage of his projectiles in combination with other more zony style assists, Jason can do that. If you want to take that, take advantage of more rushdown uh, centric assist to apply pressure to your opponent, like a cat assist or just a better projectile assist than maybe Udana, Jason, in combination with his speed and his crouching light, he can take advantage of that. As an assist, if you want to take advantage of just easy crossovers, Jason can do that too. In that regard, he makes a great support character. And Jason can, as you've seen from my combos, get that damage. So when all the chips are down, and due to Jason being an easier to play character, which means that you could probably master him quicker than other characters, Jason has that comeback ability. He can um, TOD those characters with his damage. So in that regard, he does fit an anchor play style as well. So, if you guys can keep all that in mind while you're trying out Jason, I think that you'll be doing a pretty good job. And that'll do it for this whole character tutorial featuring Jason. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Once again, if you like what I do here on YouTube, consider, check consider checking out my social media links in the description. And I'll be back to you later with future videos. This is Parker Lab, and I'll see you guys next time.